Hello everybody, it's Chris Yost, and it is a good day to be joining you for reading from Scripture, uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, verses 1, let's see, we're going to go through verse 23 today, and um, in it, uh, we're, we're getting into the, the final countdown, we're about a week early for Holy Week, but like I said, we'll, we'll be... Uh, We'll be all right. Anyway, uh, today we're going to hear about the plot to kill Jesus, um, and uh, we're going to end up with the Lord's Supper as our Lord instituted it. May this word be living bread, living water in your heart and life today. And I just, uh, folks, I love doing this. I hope you enjoy hearing it. Um, it's just a life giving thing to me, and I hope it is to you. Whoever you are, I don't care if I've ever met you or not, I love you and thank you for being a part of this precious time uh, with Jesus, uh, with each other, and with me. Let's listen to Scripture. Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police how he might betray him, Jesus, to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus to them when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters. And say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table, and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread and he, when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup that is poured out for you, is, that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see that the one who betrays me is with me. His hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going... Uh, is going as it has been determined, but woe to the one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. Um, the betrayal of Judas. Um, people have talked many times, and certainly the sin, Satan is reported to have entered uh, Judas. It's not so much what we think of as, as a possession as much the temptation of the tempter, okay, almost the words of the tempter. Um, there, there's a lot of thought that Judas would have been a zealot. In other words, he wanted to see action. He wanted Jesus to overthrow the Romans yesterday. And when he did not see that, um, that temptation was to force it to happen, to make it happen. And so a lot of there's a lot of thought that um, this great temptation, um, this possession that hits him, is one to try to force his hand, to force Jesus' hand to do what Judas thought should have been happening. Um, and then even perhaps he's angry and mad because Jesus would not do what, what Judas wanted him to do. Um, 
there, there's a lot of speculation throughout the centuries. The fact of the matter is, it is an evil temptation to f- try to force God's hand, right? And that's, that is uh, what in, enters into G, to Judas, so that he would betray Jesus. Notice that they want to do this without a crowd. Um, and that's one of the things that pleases the Sadducees, the Pharisees so much, is that Judas is going to try to get it to where they're not the bad guys. Remember, at the end of the day, they're going to make it Rome. And then the, the Jewish people, they don't want to be in trouble with Rome. Then they all get against Jesus that way. So uh, anyway, more about that later on this week. In the next section, you remember, uh, I think it was a week ago, we read about how Jesus had told the disciples to go into town and they would find a colt tied up that had never been ridden. Well, here in a similar way, we don't know if Jesus had made arrangements. Um, Of course, we can spiritualize it a lot and say it was just because he knew it. Um, Could be. Um, But chances are that there had been some preparations that were made. And so he's telling the disciples, here's how you're going to go get this done. But this is the upper room, friends. This is uh, the place of the Passover. At the institution of the Lord's Supper, um, this is this is one of those um, probably the closest thing that we get to have to the experience of the disciples. Now, rarely do we do it as a setting of a meal, but every drive-through communion, every time we share in communion, each time we are sharing in the words that our Lord spoke, and it is a reminder not that He just was. But it is really an institution that Jesus is, Christ is with us. In that sharing, in the breaking of the bread, Christ is revealed. It's that mystery of grace that we celebrate uh, each and every time we do it. Also, just want to remind you that this is the moment of the new covenant, right? It is in Jesus Christ that you and I have forgiveness that we have new life, that the Holy Spirit has free reign inside of our heart and our lives. This is it, friends. This is when you and I become the new covenant people. Every time we share in communion, we are nurtured in that identity. Um, I don't know. uh, One little closing thought real quick. It is said that baptism is the initiating sacrament. In other words, that's how we begin. That's how we are initiated into the body of Christ. But it is through communion that we are nurtured. It is through communion that we're able to be fed throughout our lives upon the immediate presence of God. Next time you're receiving, think about that, that God has made provision for your nourishment through the sacrament of communion. Let's pray. Lord, as we walk with you through these days of not knowing, these days of difficulty, um, help us, God, to not rush to that beautiful Sunday morning of resurrection, but help us to walk through the time of not knowing, the time of confusion and difficulty. Help us to walk with you and the disciples, always with an eye to where it's going to lead. God, that gives us hope and faith in the midst of our own difficulties and trials, in the midst of, uh, you know what, the, the things that perplex us. It gives us faith and encouragement, God, to know that no matter what we're going through, no matter what trials and tribulations, that Easter is always coming for us. Um, help us to be resurrection people. Help us, God, to live into that in the midst of anything that happens in our lives. In Christ's name, amen.